Geometry number 267, the total area, surface area, of a pentagonal prism. If you don't know what uh, tangent ratios are, I really need you to watch my video number 253 about tangent ratios so that you'll understand this video. Okay? The last couple videos we've been doing surface areas of prisms, triangle ones, square ones. Now we're going to do one that is a uh, pentagon base, so it's a pentagonal prism, okay? When we open a pyramid up, we can see all the surface areas that need to be measured. So for a square pyramid, if you opened it up, it would look like this. And these are the lateral sides, and the center is the base. And you can see the fold lines where if you folded it up, it would turn into a pyramid with the pointy little vertex on the top, okay? Well, for the pentagon one, it's got a pentagon base. The prism is named after the shape of its base. So you can have a hexagon, a hexagonal prism. This one has five sides for the pentagon, so it's got these five lateral sides like a star coming out, and if you bring them all up and you fold them on these dotted lines, you would have this pyramid with a pentagon for its base. Okay, so what we've got is a pentagonal prism with a height of eight inches and its base sides are four inches. Now to get the height of a lateral side, okay, that's one of these slanted sides, all right, to get that, we need the slant height formula, which is a squared plus h squared equals l squared. The a is the apothem, the h is the height or the altitude, and the l is the slant height. Now, the altitude is from the center of the base straight up. The slant height is the height of the slanted lateral side. So it's two different heights. They're not the same, okay? We get the slant height. Oh, I'm missing a t. We get the slant height by using, by using the square root of the apothem squared plus the height squared. We get the perimeter of the base by just adding how much they are all the way around, okay? So if we know each side base is four, we know the perimeter is 20, because four times five is 20. We plug the numbers into this formula of S equals half uh, slant height times perimeter, and we know that the lateral surface we know what the lateral surface area is, but we still need to add the base area to it. So before we can do this, we need to find out what the slant we need, the slant height is with the slant height formula. But before we can do that, we need to find out what the apothem is. Now, if you already know what it is, you can just plug the information into the formulas and get your total surface area if you already know the apothem, the height, and the base side length. If you don't have this information and you only have partial information, keep following me. Okay, so a pentagon is 360 degrees around its five sides, okay? If we divide that into triangles, we can solve it easier. So 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees for each angle. So we would have a pentagon broken up into these different triangles. See? We got one, two, three, four, and this fifth triangle, we're going to cut it in half, okay? By cutting that one in half, we get the apothem right there bisecting that side, okay? We get two angles. Where each of these were 72 degrees, we now get two angles that are 36, okay? Now, because we get this 36 degree angle in this particular one, we now have an acute angle of 36 degrees and an opposite side of 2, okay? Because if these are each 4, when we broke this triangle in half, this side became 2 and this side became 2, okay? So what we're going to do is a tangent ratio, which is tangent 36, which is the 36 degrees, is equal to A over B. And I've color-coded them. It's the opposite side over the adjacent side. So it's going to be 2 over B, because we don't know what the measure of the apothem is. It's just B. Okay, it's the opposite over the adjacent. So we rewrite the, f the formula, the equation, to help solve it. So B is equal to 2 over tangent 36, okay? All right, so now we've got B is equal to 2 over tangent 36. There's a couple of ways we can do this. If you don't have a scientific calculator, go to the back of your book or online on a trig table, and under the tangent column for 36 degrees, it'll be tangent column, and then the degrees will be on this side, and just look and see where they meet, and it'll say 0 0.7265.
Okay? We divide 2 by 0.7265 and we get a rounded off 2.75. I think it was 2.752 or something like that. I just didn't want to go too far that way. So I stopped at 2.75. If you have a scientific calculator, just put in 2 for the opposite side, hit divide, hit the tangent button, and type in 36, and you'll get the 2.75. Now, now we have our apothem. We know that this is 2.75. So now we have an angle, we have this adjacent side, and we have the opposite side measure. And we can plug this into the slant height formula. The apothem squared is 2.75 squared. The height was, I don't know if you remember, but our height was 8 inches, and that was straight up from the center up, right? Okay, so we've got 8 squared, and that's going to give us our slant height squared, okay? Well, 2.75 times 2.75 is 7.56. 8 times 8 is 64. We add these two numbers together, and we get our squared slant height, okay? That comes out to 71.56. Now we need to square this, okay? It comes out to 8.45. You can do that on your calculator. There might even be a chart online or in your book. You can get square root charts online just like you can the trig table. Now we have two choices. We can go my green route or we can go my orange route. So we're going to go the green because it's right here. That's using this formula for lateral surface area. Now that we have the slant height, we can plug it into this. Now remember, our perimeter was 20 because we had five sides that were four each, okay? All right, it was like that. So we're going to do half times 8.45, which is 4.225, times the 20, the perimeter, okay? That comes out to 84.5. Now we know that the slant heights are 84.5. Now we need to add the base, okay? So here's how we do the base. We know that the apothem right there was 2.75, and we know that that down here was 4, okay? Okay, I had to do a little adjustment here. Now we need to do the base, okay? So we've got this five-sided shape, and we know that each of these are 4, okay? Well, we know that half of this was a 2, right? This part was a 2, this, this side of this triangle. So I knew the apothem was 2.75, so I'm going to find the area of this one little side of the triangle. So 2 times 2.75 is 5.5. Now, normally, for a triangle, I would then cut it in half, right? To get the area, because that would be the this side times this side would be for a rectangle. But because I want the entire triangle here, this side and this side, I'm not going to cut it in half, all right? So I've got 5.5 for this entire black triangle, but there's five of them. So I need to do 5.5 times 5, and I get 27.5 for the area of this entire uh, pentagon, okay? I add that to my 84.5, the 27.5, and I get 111.5 for my total surface area. See? Okay, so now let me show you the other way. When we were here, and we knew that 8.45 uh, was our slant height, we didn't have to go this route. We could have gone this other route. Let me show you. If we know the slant height right here on the side is 8.45, and we know that each of these are 2, we can go like this and do 8.45 times the 2, okay? Now again, just like for the base that we just did down below, this would be for a rectangle, because we would have to cut it in half, right, to do a triangle. But we want the whole triangle. We want both sides, so I'm not going to cut it in half. I'm going to do the multiplication and keep it. 8.45 times 2 is 16.9, not cutting it in half, keeping it so I can add this triangle, because if you took this one and flipped it and put it right here, it would be the rectangle. So I'm going to keep the 16.9 
And because I'm doing a pentagon and I've got five of these lateral sides coming up around it, I'm going to multiply my 16.9, which is one of these, by the five sides, the five lateral sides, and I'm going to get 84.5. I'm going to add the base area, which was 27.5, and I get 111.5. Now, if you look, 84.5 and 27.5 is what we got doing it this route. The only difference between that route down there and this route is, in your head, you know you're adding five lateral sides and a base, and you're just doing it in a different way, see? So, that is how you find the total area of a pentagonal prism. Now, I was going to make one for a hexagon prism, but I really don't have to, do I? You could do this with a hexagon. You could do it with a ten-sided pyramid, couldn't you? So, I haven't made up my mind if I'm going to make one or not. I'm assuming my viewers are very intelligent and can figure it out from here. And we're going to talk about volume also. So, I'll see you in the next video and we'll see what I figured out. Keep up the good work and I'll see you later. Bye.